Tiwi Islands, 80 kilometres north of Darwin, a home to 2,000 Tiwi people, including me, Willie Riala. The largest island, Melville, is the second largest island off the Australian mainland. Bigger than on the mainland. It's here the CSIRO is working with the Tiwi people on the Tiwi Carbon Study. The Tiwi Carbon Study will help improve our future. Throughout our history, one thing has never changed, our connection to the land. But we know the way we use the land has to change if we are to have a strong future for us and our kids. Edmure, what do you think of this big fella? Our land has always supported the lives of our people. It has provided food, shelter, medicine, weapon, tools and ceremony purposes. The TV name we call this sometimes Tarakali. Tarakali. Tarakali, yeah, uh, this is. A... That's a nice name. We all depend on the land, the water, the plants, the animals, everything. But things are changing. Fighting stick. They make fighting stick out of that too, yeah. Okay, hardwood. Yeah, yeah, fighting stick with this too and spear. Opportunities for our work are very limited here, so we need to use the land in new ways to create jobs that will benefit our kids and grandkids. One way is to become part of a new carbon economy. The ultimate goal of the Tiwi Carbon Study is to help Tiwi people engage with the emerging carbon economy. And Tiwi people have a great opportunity to do that by reducing the amount of carbon pollution that occurs when the Tiwi landscapes are burnt each year. The Tiwi bush burns a lot during the dry season. These fires give off methane and nitrous oxide. These are greenhouse gases. We want to cut back those greenhouse gases and get more carbon stored in the soil and plants. So the way this will work in the emerging carbon economy is that the industries that are causing carbon pollution can compensate for that by funding what we call these offset projects. And those funds can go to, in, in this case, Tiwi people to help, um, help them manage the fire to create those offsets. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get, get some tools out and start to measure all the things along this transect. We're gonna do- We are working with CSIRO to find ways to reduce those greenhouse gases and store more carbon. We want to earn those carbon credits, but first we need to learn how to measure the changes we are making. You see both things together. In order for these offset projects to work, we need to be able to account for the carbon in a really rigorous way. And in order to do that, we need to understand the science behind how fire affects the amount of carbon stored in ecosystems. The Tiwi Carbon Study has controlled fires on 18 experimental plots. Well, when you you got to look back every second behind you when you're walking. Forward. We use drip torches to light fires in the early dry season. These fires are not so big. They break up the country so we don't get those big hot fires later in the year. Whenever we burn one of these plots, we go in immediately beforehand and measure how much grass and litter is there. And then immediately after the fires, we see how much is left so we can calculate how much carbon is burnt. For the soil, we use augers and bulk density rings. CSRA can then measure the carbon in the soil samples. We take it back to Darwin, we put it in an oven so it gets nice and dry. Then we sieve it, we grind it up and we send it down to Adelaide. And down in Adelaide they have a machine where they can measure soil carbon. Shrubs are measured and recorded. Leaves store carbon and when they burn, they release greenhouse gas. We need to know how to burn to help plants store more carbon. So we've been measuring uh, many pools of carbon in the trees, in the grasses, in the soil. And we've on average found that the plots across the Tiwi Island can store up to 100 tonnes of carbon per hectare. And carbon stored in the soil is really important. It's as important as the carbon stored in our trees and our grasses. And we want to manage fires so that we store the most amount of carbon in our soil on the Tiwi Islands. Looking after the Tiwi plants and animals is an important part of the study. The red goshawk is one of Australia's rarest birds of prey. And here's a nest right in the middle of our burn-off. There's not a lot of nests like that around. The nearest one is probably about eight kilometres. So we're going to just water the um, water around the tree to make sure when the fire comes through it doesn't affect the tree and it doesn't you know, affect around where the nest is uh, above in the tree. 
We're also looking at other animals in the fire plots. Now Tiwi has some of the most diverse ant communities on earth here. So anywhere around here in the bush we can get up to a hundred or more different species just in a hectare. And there's many of them that are found nowhere else on earth. These ants can tell us a lot. If the ants are in good shape, it's likely the bush is in good shape. This one's a, um, a horned pony ant because um, I don't know if you can see there, but you can see the Little horns horn. on the side of the head there, like a, yeah. yeah. And so its species name is Taurus after, after bull. So that's, that's quite a good one. After we burn, we go back to the plot and do more measurement. So if you just head straight, How far, uh, straight down that way, and just keep walking. Yep, yeah. so 100 metres. We collect litter, vacuum up the ash, and put it all into bags. It's important that we provide opportunities for our kids so they can have choices for the future. We include Tiwi College students in our work so they can learn more about science and more about their country. And maybe some of them will end up being a ranger like me. So what we'll do is we'll wrap the tape around the tree. It's actually a rapid assessment technique that we use, so we're working over large areas and so what we get is um, a very good snapshot of what we have in these regions, fuel load wise. From that we can work out exactly how much carbon we have in these systems. 49.5. Look through here, keep both eyes open. And then we've got much longer term. Uh, research activities where we've marked a lot of these trees, we're looking at how fast trees grow, um, how big the trees get and how fire affects that. Waypoints. We use a GPS to locate the trees on the study site. Okay, so here we have all the satellites represented and what it's saying is it's over here in the south in that direction over there. It is still too early to know how the fires affect carbon stock but there may be a lot more carbon in plant and soil than we realise. So this is the start point. What we're going to do now, we can switch that off, we'll start here, and we'll run a, run a tape measure out in this direction. This could be really important for the amount of carbon credits we get. Some preliminary work that um, CSIRO has done has shown that there's potentially, um, in the emerging carbon economy, millions and millions of dollars worth of carbon pollution that's going up in the air. And if we can just reduce the amount of fires that are occurring in here, that means it's an economic opportunity for people li living in these remote areas and particularly remote indigenous communities who have very limited um, other economic opportunities. To keep our country healthy, to keep our people healthy, we need new information. Things are changing on the Tiwi Islands and we've got to think about doing things in new ways. So our work at CSIRO has shown that if we reduce fire frequency from the current frequency of one fire every two to three years, to a fire every four to six years, we can store four times more carbon in the soil compared to that which would have been released in the smoke. We must bring together our knowledge of the past with the new science. What do the fires do? What's happening with the animals and plants? What's happening underground in the soil? The Tiwi people have always understood and cared for country. But now we need to use new knowledge because the world around us is changing. This story about country is both an old story and a new story. Most of all, it is an important story affecting all our lives here on the Tiwi Islands.